Hey guys, what's going on? Back at you with another video. This one I um, simply needed to make because it's one of those things that you promise yourself you're gonna do. Um, it's only before you die, <laughs> but hopefully way earlier. Uh, and this one is about Lloyd Pye and his uh, intervention theory. And I'm not even sure if it's his theory, but he certainly made it popular when he talked about it before he passed away, sadly, in, uh, and very suspiciously in 2013. What I mean by that is he was a very healthy guy, a non-smoker, a former athlete, uh, just a very, you know, a guy that really had a lot to live for. He was a, a researcher, a hominid researcher. He was... Uh, um, doing some great work with a very unusual skull that he was the caretaker for and uh, he you know he very mysteriously got a very rare kind of cancer uh, um, and just within weeks he was gone it was just, it was just very suspicious but what this video is going to be about because I'm going to do a lot of follow-ups on this because it deserves that much attention. What this video is going to be about is just how ahead of his time he was. Uh, and again, we go back to that moment of Patterson and Gimlin getting their footage on video, a very good footage, right? Especially for 1967. And there was nothing wrong with the footage, obviously, as we've discussed, but there was a lot wrong with the context and with the time. Of, of the footage. In other words, 1967, when you think back, there was no, nothing at all that, that was, um, that could have been uh, related to what they had. There was no, uh, nothing to compare it to, nothing to, um, to no forum to seriously discuss this. Uh, you know, science didn't want to have anything to do with it. They dismissed it before even checking it out. And you, they could have had, you know, 4K, footage uh four hours worth and it still wouldn't have uh been uh, you know accepted as legitimate footage because it just couldn't be true right so when lloyd pie discussed his intervention theory at first of course he was met with the exact same reaction he was met with this cannot be true uh evolution is is what you know we're gonna go with and life uh, began with a you know with a uh lightning bolt striking a puddle, puddle of, of water which is which is pretty asinine that's a pretty laughable um you know um theory but we're asked to to believe that that's true and we're asked to believe that that's exactly what happened which is to me written ludicrous but there you have it there's a bunch hundreds of phds going uh-huh uh -huh, yeah that yeah that sounds very 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 plausible absolutely and it's not in, in that only. There's many other areas where we can get into. But sticking to the, to the topic at hand, Lloyd Pye not only laid out his theory uh, in a very succinct, you know, very logical, very very uh, well-researched way, but he um, he had a very good um, ability to tie it all together. So he used what he had at the time, which wasn't that much. He had the work of Zachariah Sitchin. He had the work of uh, Grover Pants and uh, John Green and uh, Bert Bendernagel and uh, a lot of other very good men that have gone before him that had to face even more ridicule than Lloyd Pye did. Um, but he took all of that, you know, the crumbs that were there, uh, the crumbs, sorry, <laughs> the crumbs that were there, he you know, collected them and put together a very cohesive, very logical, very, um, you know, very, very believable story of what happened way more likely than what we've been told in, in, uh, in school, okay, and in class. So, this is where he has to give get a lot of props. I mean, he's no longer here, so, you know, uh, he doesn't understand how important his work will probably be looked at. Um, like how seminal it'll be in the future, right? As we as we move forward, and we obviously debunk the the myth of of, of our or human evolution from primates, which is absolutely absolute nonsense. Um, we have we are nothing like primates in in at least twelve ways, but there's probably more than that. 
but um, he, he went into genetics, he went into, you know, chromosomal fusion, he went into RH factor, he went into uh, genetic um, uh, disorders and defects that are affecting us at a very high rate as opposed to a, a, a species that is only 200,000 years old, should have maybe maybe 15 or 20. What, what, what are we doing running around at 4,000 plus, right? Like, that's a good question. That's a very good question that uh, we don't have much answer to, right? A uh, good answer to. Anyway, so um, the other thing he did really well, and again, I'm going to get into more details of what he said if you're not aware of his, um, uh, you know, talks and, and lectures. I, I'll po post a good one below, but I'm, I'm going to get into more details later. Th what this is about is to just remember what he was known for and to remember just how important of a personality he was and why he was important. He was important because in one of his later lectures, closer to his death, he, um, he basically said that as much as you know, science is, is important and scientific uh, procedures and research are important, there's areas in science where they're not being followed at all. And if we, the fringe today, like we're the fringe, the guys that talk about, you know, uh, cryptids and, 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 you know, very fringe topics that are not uh, discussed in the mainstream or in the scientific community, if we want to put, in, put some inroads uh, for ourselves and make some, some actual progress, we have to understand that there's a procedure to this. This is not you know, write a good paper, have some good uh, evidence, have some good, uh, you know, research behind it and get it peer reviewed and you're going to be fine. That's not how it works, okay? If, if, if there's anything um, that, that, that's, that's not uh, fully embraced by the scientific community in your, in your abstract, forget it. Don't even submit it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get, uh, you know, laughed out of the, the process and uh, by people like Michael Shermer and, and company and you're gonna you, you won't even it won't even see the light of day right so um, now being 2019 there are other outlets you can use the internet you can use uh, forums you can you know you can go and, and, and talk uh, talk about your topic and have lectures and stuff but of course if you're not even you know in a, in a, uh, on, on a medium scale of importance it's not gonna make a difference so you have to we have to understand this as a, as a human as a as humanity as human beings that even if we're intelligent even if we have good um, evidence if, even if we present it really well it doesn't matter that's not gonna get us to where we want it to, uh, to where we want to go with the discussion that we're you know having it's not gonna do it what's gonna do it is what um, Lloyd was talking about and that is first of all in the in the Sasquatch community, in the UFO community, in all these you know cryptozoology community, in all these communities that that uh, are doing decent work, you know, and they are getting together and they are talking about you know this important these important subjects. Uh, in these communities, we are very dysfunctional. Uh, these are I'm just paraphrasing now, Lloyd Pai, and we are trying to take on a very efficient, very functional, very um, well-funded, very well, um, you know, very well uh, just supported, very well uh, organized team. And we're not going to do it on the front. Like, we're not going to just head on, take them on, even with really good evidence, with really good examples, with really good, um, with really good uh, you know, uh, weight behind us. Because, because it's just not going to work. They know how to deal with us. But if we were to get organized, if we, get, if we were to uh, crowdfund some stuff, some genetic uh, you know, uh, tests, some, some more um, expeditions into very interesting places that you know, not a lot of people have gone to, then we could, we could have uh, slowly, we could you know, start, like Lloyd said, pick out some equipment and, and start getting ready for the game. On, on the actual level playing field, right? And it still wouldn't be level, it would be tilted, but at least we would be on the field. Right now, we're not even in the stands. We're, 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 we're getting ushered off by the ushers. You know, like, you're not, you don't even belong here. That's, that's how bad it is in 2019 still, which is why I have nothing but respect for someone like, um, you know, 
like uh, uh, John Green and and um, and uh, uh, you know um, the people that are in this community, um, like Jeffrey Meldrum, uh, they're doing phenomenal work in spite of all this, all this you know kind of like snickering and laughter behind their back, right? So this is exactly what Lloyd, he left us a lot of great things, books, a lot of great presentations, the Star Child, uh, Star Child work and progress that he uh, did with it. But the most important thing, in my opinion, that Lloyd Pied left for us was the fact that if we want to change this outlook and change the way our rea reality, basically, because if this becomes, his knowledge becomes mainstream, it changes everything. People will stop going to work. People will stop uh, paying taxes. People will stop obeying the law. And sometimes, sadly, uh, but it will change everything. We'll have to restructure a lot of uh, what we have been, uh, you know, sold, right? Um, so, what he, the main thing he's left us is that uh, if we're going to do this, we have to get organized first. Okay, so you can't have a, a, a move on conference and not let some people in because this is a move on conference and no, you know, like, or we can't have a Sasquatch conference and and be like, you know, and be critical, super critical of our own people that are in a, in a very similar but not quite identical field. Okay, because we're never going to get anywhere. And 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 like he said again, I'm I'm quoting, Bigfoot's real, Sasquatch's real, Bigfoot's real. Sasquatch is real. That's not gonna do anything. That's that's um, sandbox grade five level argument. Okay, that's gonna that's absolutely not gonna do anything at all. So please post below, like um, what in your opinion would be the best way to get organized? Uh, what would be the best way to fundraise without uh, for for some of these you know projects like you know expeditions uh, to to some uh, British Columbia for example places that are very remote uh, to find you know stuff that has not been discovered yet or um, genetic testing of certain uh, hair samples or or just basically bringing very good presentations and good evidence out into a bigger medium you know like uh, like for example I would as a suggestion uh, present someone like Bob Gimlin, who's a, a YouTuber, um, as someone that is worthy of our support, financial, time, uh, word of mouth. He's, he's phenomenal. He's a, he's a student. Uh, he, he works. He, he, he does this part time because he's simply like me, doesn't have the time to sit there and, and, uh, and make even more videos. But his videos are fantastic. They're well researched. They're scientific. They're scholarly. They, they really make a difference. So someone like that, I would very happily support but you know it's one thing if I and my buddy there support them but if we support them as a few thousand people that's that now we're getting organized now we're now we're actually uh, be getting behind a person that's young that's um, exciting you know and and they want to make some changes happen and that is the kind of organization that Lloyd Pye was was um, hoping we would get behind so Please, again, thank you for spending your time with me. Post below what you thought of Lloyd Pye, if you've read any of his books, if you've seen any of his presentations, tell me what you think. But, and, uh, but, but definitely um, check him out and, and, um, and let me know below what you would do to forward this, uh, this theory, this intervention theory that he proposes that is so interesting and so pr much more probable than the BS that we're being force-fed of, you know, the the lightning bolt into, into the warm pond and the um, evolution of of uh, humanity from primates okay i'll talk to you soon